Hello there, my name is Keith Surtees. I'm a spiritual teacher. I've been working throughout Europe with my wife Fiona, uh, living in Iceland, uh, Sweden, England. Um, and I've decided to um, take the teachings and um, the philosophy that I have and the tools and techniques out to, to more people. So this is my first video for YouTube and uh, this first video is going to be connected to uh, questions that are often asked to me and uh, basically I am trying to provide in this video uh, some suggestions which will help you at home in dealing with uh, what we can call the inner conflict, the pain and um, techniques which can help you to move forward in life. At the present moment, the um, biggest thing that I deal with is what I can call the New Age confusion. There's a, a lot of philosophy out there. There's a lot of stuff connected to, uh, for example, the law of attraction. And then there's the, uh, what we can call the roots of the New Age and, and the roots of spirituality and, and Western esoteric thought that bring up uh, many what seem like contradictions. Um, the big thing which, which hits me in my private practice over and over again is that uh, people buy uh, books and, and they, they listen to uh, tapes and CDs uh, connected to how they can change their life, how they can dynamically think, how they can use thought to further their lifetime. And then and their life dream and vision and, and then they come back and they say things like okay uh, I've been working hard, I've been doing the affirmations, uh, I've been praying, I've been visualizing, I, I've been doing self-hypnosis, uh, I've been cleaning my diet out, I've been working on my physical body, I've been doing this for five years and, and, and nothing seems to be moving forward. So what is the block? Good question, yeah? What is the block? Um, so then we have to look at um, these kind of philosophies, the law of attraction, the power of thought, uh, visualization, uh, how to use the emotions and positive feeling within yourself to, to change your life and to manifest things in your life. That's one side of the equation. And then we have to ask the question, is there something set? You know, are we a, a certain set pattern within our personality, within our uh, life structure within our uh, history, our family uh, genetics, uh, our socialization that uh, create a block to this. And, and thirdly, maybe, can we do anything to, to uh, remove these blocks? Should we do anything to remove these blocks? Well, we've got the whole world within those questions. Every human being we see, I would posit, is trying to improve life, is trying to move forward and, and to, to feel better about themselves, feel more joy, more happiness, more security. And yet at the same time, we know that as we practice these disciplines, certain roadblocks get put in our pathway. Not only this, but it seems that there's a, a deep capacity to self-sabotage and, and uh, we have this unconscious, we can call shadow or, or deep levels of uh, unconscious um, programming which seems to work against our aim and our professed aim of improving self, improving life, it may be in the area of health, it may be in the area of uh, relationship or wealth or work, etc. Creativity. And we seem to be battling not only against these blocks within ourselves, but uh, you have the group thing, don't you? You know, the people you meet uh, when you go to the cafe or you go to the supermarket, etc. Well, let's be truthful, it's not always a positive experience and, and, and and you, you, you're standing in, in the uh, waiting to pay for your shopping, and, and you can hear the conversation all around you. And, and well, if you're lucky, it's positive, but often it's not. And this is an actual what can we call it energy 
that is um, a psychological energy, a social energy, and it's coming into you. So let's get back to this question. Can we manifest, can we use the law of attraction and positive thinking and things like uh, NLP, neuralistic uh, programming, etc., to, to move forward? The answer, I think, is showing itself over and over again. Is yes, 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 of course we can. But in truthfulness, it isn't quite as simple as that is it? If we go deeper within and we have been the type of person that has spent many years working with these things, we realize that we haven't quite moved as far along the pathway we, as we would like. And why is this so? What is the problem here? Then we can go back to the great teachers that first affected the movement that we call New Age, go back to 1870s great people like the Eastern yogis that came over to the West. I personally am very fond of Paramananda Yogananda and he gave a great deal of teaching. Uh, there's a lot of positive thought in that teaching, but they do mention this thing called karma. And karma, simply put, is cause and effect. Um, action, reaction, patterns that we create. But these patterns are said to be created within us before birth. And are connected, again, according to that philosophy, past lives. Now, I personally, I'm not saying you should believe in past lives or not believe in past lives, but let's say that past lives are true. And then let's say that our birth is a result of the karma or cause and effect of those past lives. Then, if that is true, within that karma, within that family, within that social setting, and within that national background that we were born to, are certain set limitations. So, we go back onto the side of the law of attraction, we can say we can use the mind and we can achieve anything we want. On the other side, we have the law of karma, which says, well, yes, within limits. And I think the truth lies between these two particular approaches. There is karma, there is cause and effect within one lifetime. And there is the potential and the possibility for us to use spiritual tools and to begin to move our life forward. But we mustn't, I posit, get too crazy about things like positive thinking and all the other tools we can use to suddenly manifest the most amazing life from a life that is, has been very limited. Now, there is, I would say, definite structures of blocking and with that blocking I would posit something else for you to think about. That those are there because those are the very lessons, the very blocks, which will bring out a much deeper, more fulfilling pathway if we use positive thinking. And what I'm saying, to put this more simply, is that the blocks are part of a process of deeper spiritualization and that when we begin to move forward using the law of attraction and understanding the law of karma and combining these two, we are a deeper, more compassionate person. There is, has been many teachers who have told us that suffering creates compassion or can create compassion. And this compassion through karma or cause and effect means that when we get more powerful with our thoughts, when we get more powerful with our ability to manifest, we have this wonderful addition. And that wonderful addition is compassion. And I would say that within my studies and research as a seeker upon the pathway for many years, I found that that compassion is the most valuable of gems. It is wonderful to manifest for sure. But it is even more wonderful to love and to feel the power of love and the power of compassion as a walking, practical pathway of life, of spirituality. Now this was my chosen topic and I'm only going to do a, a short introduction to this. Further along the pathway I will reintroduce this subject and, and discuss it further. But 
The reason I have introduced it at this point is because it is causing so much conflict. You have on one side a uh, massive uh, marketing of the idea of law of attraction, books like The Secret, etc. And I'm not saying it's good or bad, but it, it's powerful tools. And yet it doesn't seem to answer all questions. And I posit that the esoteric uh, systems of the past, Western esoteric, and also things like the Tree of Life and the old hermetic laws of the uh, what we can call the secret esoteric society also contain useful information which if we combine them together in our practice creates a substantial shift both within and outside in our world and it is not as simple as just taking one law and following it. We must have if you like a full palette of colors, we, we need to taste a variety of food. We need to be totally alive, living, artistic, spiritual people. And I would suggest that if you take this approach and use another quality of the heart, which I would call pure intuition, then you can take your spiritual practice and you can deepen it to a level which will astound you. Okay, as I said, this is just an introduction to uh, some ideas, some philosophical ideas. And I will further these ideas in future talks. I hope that you enjoyed this talk and I hope that it makes you think and feel and basically enjoy your life more. Thank you for listening. Take care and I'll see you at some point in the future. Bye-bye.